the Senate results are in. Gaius Maxentius is allowed to war against the British. Yeah, because they're about to get the win, so the Senate has allowed him to go to war with Britons. However, the Senate put forwards another proposal, and that is any German land conquered, well, British land in the German region or formerly owned by the Germans, must be returned back to the Germans. That's what the Senate voted on, so any land conquered east of this way, which we'll have to do quite a bit, I think, we got to give back to the Germans, if they are still alive. Yeah, because they are struggling for territory right now. Actually, really struggling for territory. This is Thracian land? No way. So that's Thrace. Britain. Macedon. Alright, now, I wasn't going to do this, but I think I've got to do a very quick map reveal. Not using it to cheat, though. I just want to see the map. Oh, no, the Germans. They could be dead. Yeah, we might not even get the chance to do that deal. Ooh. Alright, not using it to cheat. Feel free to look around the map, uh, but I'm not going to. There we go. Alright, that's interesting to note. Just had to uh, double check that there. And for the third and the final vote, is Publius Maxentius, the current consul, allowed to go on his crusade to conquer the wonders of the world? That was his goal. And the Senate results are in. And they said no. They turned Publius down. They said no. And he is really not happy about that. He has a big name to live up to. And he was hoping that this would be his moment where he can actually live up to it. Be known as great himself and go down in Roman history. And the Senate said no. Welcome to the Rome Total War Roleplay Campaign. Part 13. What? What? Whoa. Twinker reams are good. Wow, that was... <laughs> that was a lot of losses. We, we really need to get rid of these Carthaginian fleets. Uh, Galerius, where you at? Uh, his army is ready. We need to get a fleet down here. And we need to be fast. Yeah, get down there. Uh, wow. Did not expect that. Right, we beat them that time. Right, you go back into port, and you circle around. Yeah, this Carthaginian fleet, they're recruiting more than our entire empire can from just two ports. It's crazy. Carthage and their fleets, they're crazy. All right, we've got a spy with us as well. We've still got our spy down south. Yeah, the army next turn will be ready to go into Iberia. Oh, oh, at last. Publius Victor, he's married. Oh, we'll check that out soon. What's this one? Uh, we lost a spy, right. Uh, yeah, get another one. We do need one down there. Oh, well done, Publius, well done. Uh, people in Rome, they were starting to get a little bit suspicious. <laughs> All right, Titus got a treasurer. Yeah, that'll be good for his new management role. Uh, Titus got a priest of Jupiter. And there we are, Publius. He has a wife, Gala. At long last, he's finally married, but he's not going to have any children, though, because all four of his spots are taken up by adopted men who he wanted to follow him around everywhere he went. Yeah, the people were getting a little bit suspicious of Publius, but yeah, he's married now. Uh, those suspicions uh, would be put to rest. Whoa, what is this? A Greek fleet, ooh. We've got to, yeah, just get a couple of ships to deal with this. Uh, that could be, no, it, it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. No need to worry there. Oh, no, ooh. Ooh, they did not attack, right. Pontus, they want trade rights. Uh, sure, but we want maps. There we go, good. 
Ooh, Pontus Warvin with Seleucia. Huh. For command. Not bad. Augustus Travis wants to adopt him. Eh, uh, sure, that will allow it. Yeah, Augustus Travis is the guy who travels with uh, Galerius here. Yeah, that's quite a bit of command. I, I don't want to have to put four generals in one army. You know what? Augustus here, he's had his experience. Yeah, with Galerius. He can be... Yeah, he can go back and be the governor of Africa. I think that's the best role for him. He should be fine. Hopefully he doesn't get ambushed on the way back. Alright, get this fleet into port. There we go. Got a little bit worried there. Right, retrain all of them. And get something to act as garrison. Oh, Gaius the Raffle is married as well. Uh, the first adopted son of Publius. Oh, they're all getting married all of a sudden. <laughs> it's falling apart. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, change of plan by Publius. Uh, he's sailing back now to Macedon with his entire army with him. Uh, left behind in Pergamon is hardly a garrison. Uh, we're gonna lose this settlement, so the order is to burn it down. Don't let anyone else have a good hold on it. And there we go. Pergamon was sacked uh, by Publius as he left. Uh, all the money has gone with him. Ah, oh, the Egyptians attacking us in Libya. Ah, uh, that's going to be annoying. Oh, we lost most of our fleet there as well. Oh, the final German settlement is under siege. Oh, come on Germans, please hold out. I think they're going to die. Yeah, I don't think they're going to make it. Alright, we need to dis uh, destroy this Greek fleet here. Alright, God, we beat them. Where did they sail off to? Oh, they went somewhere down here. Ah, uh, they're probably done a dock, aren't they? Drop their troops off. Ah, uh, we can't have that. Whoa, the Egyptians do not want uh, uh, Publius here to get back, but, you know, that massive fleet is going to mean nothing at all. Drop Publius back off and then go finish them off. There we go. Alright then Publius, you have a very large Macedonian army coming, so... Yeah, get up here and be ready for battle. Wait, we lost? No. Servius? Servius has died on his dodgy island of Corsica by his deathbed. There was a note. In blood it said, help me. Hmm, to me it seems like a suicide. Yeah, I think Servius killed himself. Oh well, that was a shame. Uh, let's just forget about his entire existence. But keep the island running. Who's controlling it now? Cassius Pescenius. Ah yes, this guy here, 60 years old with his 32-year-old wife. Ah, uh, yeah, let's let's just uh, put a blanket over the island. Uh, just ignore it for now. Carthaginians, start your rowers. <laughs> they look like we're getting ready for this. <laughs> Pergamon did rise up. Yeah, the Greeks took it back, they rose up. Oh, well. That's the end of that story. And Publius, he blames the senators for their incompetence and lack of knowledge. What's this Egyptian army like? Oh, that's... Yeah, it's a Hellenistic Egypt. That's done a bit tough. A lot of phalanxes, what do we have? Yeah, just a load of Hastati. We're done a struggle there. Yeah, luckily we've got reinforcements at Forbes as far. Anyway, it just so happens that Galerius Frontinus's army is ready. And he will sail next turn to Iberia. Balhano here, staring him down. Yeah, to uh, Corduba, is it? And then Carthago Nova. Ooh, almost forgot the spy. Get him in there as well. He's going to be important. And Gaius Maxentius. His army is now ready. Retrained in Alesia. He has permission to go to war with the British. And so he shall. 
he begins marching down south to Lododum. A settlement that we need to take. Right, the Germans still alive for now, that's good. That's very good. Yeah, we need them alive for as long as possible, so we can return land to them and have a strong ally in the north yet again. Hey, we sunk the Greeks. Good job, soldiers, good job. And we've got two more generals now. Uh, Merciless Tetius, uh, one of the adopted children of uh, Publius, and we have the better Decimus Trebonius. I think he belongs in Athens. Yeah, he's got a bit of management. Put him in Athens. This guy is more of a warrior. Get him in Sparta. He can govern that settlement. Word, however, reached Lentulus about Publius Maxentius. Publius the Victor, or Publius the Great, as he now goes by. He did not return to Thessalonica. He did not fight the Macedonians. He did not do his other order of pushing back Thrace Illyria from Byzantium. He instead pushed through the mountains heading westward to Greece. He now stands at the port of Apollonia, near the heel of southern Italy. A fleet is ordered down south to where Publius stands. Publius boards the fleet. There is outcry in Rome about the true intentions of Publius Maxentius. Lentulus stands up in the Senate, and he calls forth a man he trusts dearly, a man named Gaius Marius. He pushes through a new law designed by Gaius Marius and approved by Lentulus. This is an emergency law, an emergency act, stating that all new Roman troops will be paid for not by the general, but by the senate, meaning that the new era of soldiers in Rome are loyal to the state and whoever is in command. So the man elected in by the senators. Whereas before Principes, Hastate, all of those, uh, they are loyal to the general and they follow the general no matter what. This should increase the power of the senate and weaken the power of the conquering generals. However, at great cost. But with that cost, the troops should be better quality. Let's take a look at the new units unlocked. So we have Auxilia, a, quite a decent spear unit, uh, considering, especially considering what we had before. Uh, Roman cavalry, quite a good cav unit. Early legionary cohort and normal legionary cohort. We also like to get units such as Praetorian Guard, but they can only defend the ruler. They will not be seen on an average battle. And Urban Cohorts. Again, they will not be seen on the battle. Instead, they can only defend the cities. You'll never see them anywhere else. So yeah, the main backbone of the Legion is going to be the new Legionary Cohort. Or the earlier ones if... You know, we need them in a settlement where, you know, we don't have access to these. A very important law pushed through. But that being said, the current three commanders of Rome right now, you know, they don't have the new troops loyal to the Senate. Their troops are still the early kind, loyal to and only to the generals. Senators in discord. Oh, get this stupid rebel army out of the way. Go, shoo, go, I don't care. Yes, whatever. <laughs> Senators in Discord, it is now your time to decide the fate of Rome. There is no vote from this video. Instead, you get to design your own vote. Each head of house in the Discord 
can put forth one act, one thing that you want voted for. So talk with your houses, find out what your people want. What do you want to vote on to try and solve the current situation, if it even is a situation? Of course, you can't just say anything, it still has to be approved by me, it needs to be logical, but yeah, put one forwards, it will be voted on, and yeah, the results will come through for the next episode, part 14, where who knows what will happen. Use your brain, Senators. Don't do anything stupid. Beware of all consequences. Every decision has a positive and a negative. Remember that. Anyway, I have been Melkor. And I hope you have enjoyed part 13 of the Rome Total War roleplay campaign. Okay, but because this episode ended a little bit uh, shorter than I expected, uh, you know, it just, uh, the storyline caught up with me a little bit and we didn't get to do much, which was unfortunate, but, you know, next episode, that's gonna be a big good one. I thought we'll check out some of the stats. So let's take a look here. Who do we want in? I do want to see Macedon. I was describing Macedon as a threat for most of this campaign. But they really are shadowed compared to us. But we did take a lot out of them. Uh, who else do we want? I want the Egyptians because we got a defeat imminent from them. I want the British and... now nah, we don't need the Germans, uh, I think. Let's get Carthage in for, uh, yeah, historical sakes. So here we are leading. It's, it's amazing how these big powers that I was fearing, the Macedonians, the British, they're nothing compared to the Egyptians. Like, look at that. Whew, they're, they're in quite a good spot. You know, like, look, looking at us on the map, like, they are a contender, uh, which is interesting to see. Uh, Military-wise, their military is the same size. Ooh. Yeah, Britain, they have a decent military, sort of the same size as Macedon's. We never really destroyed Macedon's, did we? No, we had one battle outside Larissa. Apart from that, it was all just garrisons. Yeah. Carthage, they, they got destroyed. But they had a good start. I think they were the largest power at the start of the game. Uh, production ranking. Okay. Territory, here we go. We're at 32 settlements. Uh, Carthage down to, I think that's two. Macedon at three or four. Yeah, I think four. And then the British and the Egyptians. Ooh, the Egyptians. Do they need 15 settlements? I think that's all they need to win. Uh, 15 settlements and destroy a certain faction. I'll have to check that. <laughs> and then financial. No cheat codes were used. <laughs> Although it does look like it. <laughs> This was when I conquered, uh, hold on, is it? Let's get back to, uh, territory. Oh no. I thought that was when I started conquering into Greece, but no, what was that? That was a very sudden rise. Now we had Greece under control at about this point, but surely all of that is not from Greece alone. Maybe it is. Also, I haven't been spending as much as well. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it just looks like <laughs> add money for a thousand. <laughs> uh, what's next? Uh, population here. Egypt, quite a good population. They were leading at this point. And that's everything. You know what? I'm going to reveal the map. Not going to use it to cheat, but because we got some extra time, I might as well. There's not really any information I can get out of this. And by the time I come back to do the next episode, I'd have completely forgotten. So let's take a little look. Yeah, the Germans really are struggling. The British, they could probably destroy them. Um, I, I don't want to check Iberia. I want that to be completely new land for me in the next episode. And let's take a look at the Egyptians. Yeah, that's a lot of territory they have. 
and the Seleucid Empire getting pushed back into the mountains. Parthia having quite a good campaign, uh, you know, all things considered. Yeah, that's one, two, three, four, five settlements. Uh, Scythia's almost dead. Yeah, they should go soon. Uh, Thrace Illyria. They're having a good game. They've got territory in Segestica, Salona, Byzantium, their homeland, uh, Tanais, and all the way up here to home sweet home. So weird seeing Macedon this high. All the Germans were surviving down here in uh, Quinkum. Never mind. <laughs> they're gonna lose that settlement soon. And the Gauls, they're in love of them. Uh, this settlement here, Oscar, I believe that one is. And over here in Galatia. Alright then, so, what do the Egyptians need to conquer? 15 settlements and destroy the Seleucid Empire, yeah. They're two settlements away from winning. Because I say it's a short victory objective. Because it makes it a bit more exciting at times and we get storylines like this. A faction could actually beat us. Uh, which I kind of like. But yeah, if the Egyptians take the final two Seleucid settlements, we lose. Got to be careful of that, and we don't have any armies invading the Egyptians, so... Yeah, we have to be very careful. We could lose this campaign still. What's going to happen next? I have no idea. But yeah, until the next episode... Part 14... Goodbye. Thank you.